Good morning everyone. Hope you all are doing well. We know that nobody is perfect. Okay. So similarly actually the solid is also not perfect. Some impurities are there, okay. Some defects are there, okay, like us, <laughs> like human. Okay. So today the objective of uh, this class is to uh, discuss about the imperfections in solids or you can say the defects in solids okay actually this imperfection is coming from the arrangement of the constituent particles okay so we are mainly concentrated on the crystalline solids okay so the crystalline solid you know uh, we know that in case of crystalline solid the arrangement of the constituent particles may be in short range order or maybe in long range order okay but the thing is that whether they are in you know the short range order arrangement or the long range order arrangement there are some imperfections okay you know generally a solid is actually formed by the aggregation of very you know large amount of small crystals okay that means you can in other words you can say that uh, many small crystal will going to aggregate with each other to form a solid okay and uh, you know this actually this small crystal which will going to form that solid they have some defects okay actually you know um, actually the the size of a crystal okay the size of a crystal will actually depends upon the uh, crystallization time or the process crystallization process okay uh, if the the whole solid is one only one crystal okay then that crystal is known as single crystal solid okay and uh, actually single crystal are formed uh, when you know the crystallization process takes or you can say that if the crystallization process is very very slow then we can get single crystals and this is the purest form of the crystalline solid okay always remember single crystals are the purest form of the crystalline solids why because they 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 get sufficient amount of time to arrange themselves in order to to give a very good crystal okay even single crystal have some defects okay so that means nobody is perfect okay nobody is perfect single crystal is also not perfect okay even the purest of purest form has some defects okay understand and the defects in crystal which is actually crystal defects are classified uh, mainly in two different classes okay the first one is known as point defects and the second one is known as line defects okay so in case of point defects actually you know these uh, defects crystal defects are mainly because of we already know that they are because of the irregularities of arrangement okay so in case of point defect the defects is actually uh, occur or observed uh, because of the irregularities or you can say the deviations from the ideal arrangement around a point okay or an atom that means around a constituent particles okay simple but in case of line defect actually the line defects are observed uh, you know along a row that means the arrangement of the constituent particles uh, that means that there will be some irregularities okay there will be some irregularities along a row uh, in that crystals okay so if we observe such type of uh, defects then that defect is known as line defects okay and these two defects are combinedly known as crystal defects okay in your syllabus only point defects are there so we are going to uh, you know focus on the point defects so first we will discuss about the types of point defects so mainly uh, they are classified into three types one is known as stereometric defects second is impurity defects and number three is known as non stereometric defects okay so what is stereometric defects actually you know um, this is defined as uh, these are the point defects that do not disturb the stereosymmetry of a solid so what is the meaning of it let's suppose uh, water okay water or you can say sodium chloride okay 
So what is the formula of sodium chloride? Sodium chloride formula is NaCl. That means the ratio of this sodium and chloride will be what? 1 is to 1. Okay. So if we remove some sodium positive from the crystal, then their, you know, their ratio will be disturbed. Okay. If the ratio will be disturbed, then the formula will be not the same. Let's suppose uh, there are total 10 sodium positive ions and then Cl negative ions are present uh, in that, uh, you know, sodium chloride lattice. Okay. If, uh, if, we, if we, let's suppose we, we remove one sodium positive ion from that solid, then it will become what? 9 is to 10. Okay. So it will not remain 1 is to 1. Okay. The ratio will not remain 1 is to 1. So the stoichiometric of that, uh, you know, the formula or you can say the formula of the uh, compound will actually destroy it. Okay. So in case of stoichiometric defects, they are stoichiometric. That means the ratio will be reserved. Okay. They are molecular formula or you can say that the formula of the compound will be remain reserved. Okay. It will not going to change. Understand? Again, uh, this stoichiometric uh, defects are also known as intrinsic or thermodynamic defects. Okay. And uh, they are again divided into two types and they are vacancy defects and interstitial defects okay so what is the meaning of uh, vacancy defects so when we you know apply some heat on a crystal then maybe some you know some constituent particle may be come out from that crystal that is okay making some vacancy so because of that vacancy some defects are created so this defects because of that vacancy is known as vacancy defects okay since you know uh, this defect is because of the removal or because of the loss of some constituent particle from the solid crystal so the total you know the total density of that uh, solid will become uh, you know lower that means the density will decrease uh, you know uh, in that substance or in that solid and what about interstitial defects so in case of interstitial defect actually some molecules or atoms or you can say that constituent particles okay some constituent particle will going to occupy interstitial site okay and uh, because you know some constituent particle will come from outside to you know occupy interstitial site in that you know crystal so the uh, there will be some defects okay that means uh, and these defects because of that, uh, you know, occupancy of the some extra atoms or molecules, or you can say the constituent particles, is known as interstitial defects. Understand? And since you know some constituent particle will be going to occupy some interstitial sites, so the density will going to increase. That means the density of the substance will going to increase because of this interstitial defects. Okay. Remember that this vacancy and interstitial defects can be only observed in non-ionic solid okay we cannot observe these two defects in case of ionic solids why why we cannot uh, you know observe these uh, two defects in case of ionic solids if somebody asks you then what will be your answer the answer will be like this okay we know that in case of ionic solids uh, the ionic solid always maintain their electrical neutrality. Okay, let's suppose we have a sodium chloride crystal in which uh, 10 sodium positive ions are present and to make uh, to maintain the electrical neutrality uh, total 10 chloride must be present in that crystal. Okay, but in case of vacancy defects and interstitial defects, they did not actually mention uh, about uh, the you know constituent particles actually the nature of constituent particles okay so if we remove let's suppose in case of uh, vacancy defects okay if we remove two constituent particles they may be two sodium positive or they may be two chlorine negative even okay so if you remove two sodium positive ions then the electrical neutrality will going to disturb okay similarly like in case of interstitial defects okay if we introduce two sodium positive ion in that crystal 
or we can introduce two chloride negative only two only two chloride negative ions in that crystal then also the electrical neutrality will going to be disturbed so that's why uh, you know the vacancy defects and the interstitial defects can only be exhibited by the non ionic uh, solids okay in place of this vacancy defects and interstitial defects uh, ionic solid will exhibit frankel defects and schottky defects now what is uh, frankel defects okay so this defect is actually like interstitial defects okay but the thing is that the difference is that we will not going to add the you know you know external uh, constituent particles that means we will not going to add our constituent particles from outside okay instead of it uh, actually some constituent particle which are actually inside that uh, solid will going to uh, you know displace their location okay and the first thing is that you have to remember the first thing is that the Frankel defect is only shown by the ionic solid okay this is the first condition or this is the first point okay only ionic solid will going to exhibit Frankel defects and the second point is that there will be a large difference in the size of the ions okay we already know that in ionic solids uh, one positive ion and one negative ion must be there okay to form a ionic solid and to exhibit the Frankel defects the size of the positive ion must be smaller than the size of the anion okay so uh, if the size of the you know uh, the cation which is actually a smaller ion okay uh, actually is small then what will going to happen this ion will can dislocate from its normal position to an interstitial site okay as shown in this figure okay and because of this you know this location they will going to create some vacancy defects also okay that means some vacancy will going to create because of this dislocations and also at the same time uh, you know at the same time that dislocated ion that means this positive ion will going to dislocate it into some interstitial site and because of that they will going to also exhibit what interstitial defects so that means so in case of Frankel defects the vacancy defects and interstitial defects are simultaneously observed understand because in Frankel defects the dislocation of the cations will occur so this defect is also known as dislocation defects okay and we already know that uh, you know to exhibit this Frankel defects there must be a large difference in the size of the ions okay so for example you know silver chloride the silver positive ion is very very smaller than the chloride ion okay so this is an example similarly silver bromide silver iodide okay or zinc sulfide understand actually this you know these cations are actually very very small or in comparison to that the anion okay so that's why they can exhibit the Frankel defects okay or you can say that dislocation defects so if you notice this Frankel defects we are not going to add or uh, you know constituent particles from outside okay or we are not removing some constituent for our particle from that crystal uh, to the uh, outside okay so that means the density will be what density will be remain constant so in Frankel defects or in dislocation defects the density of the substance will be remain constant understand so now coming to the Scott key defects so what is Scott key defects okay so actually basically uh, we can say that uh, the Scott key defects is a type of vacancy defects which is shown by ionic solids so we already know that vacancy defect is ob uh, you know observed in case of non ionic solid so if we observe some vacancy defects in ionic solid that vacancy defect is known as Schottky defects simple okay so let's suppose we have one crystal uh, in a solid crystal and uh, they will uh, actually this solid crystal let's suppose this solid is ionic solids okay 
Now suppose we remove two positive uh, ions uh, from that crystal, okay. So what is going to happen? To maintain the electrical neutrality, we have to uh, remove at the same time two negative ions also, okay. And the defects due to removal of uh, the same amount of positive ions and the negative ions are, uh, you know, known as Scott key defects. Or you can say that the defects which is observed in a ionic solids due to the you know removal of uh, you know same amount of positive as well as negative ions is known as Scott key defects again what about the density of this crystal if we remove uh, you know same amount of cations as well as anions obviously uh, the density will going to decrease because we are removing the constituent particles of here the ions okay we remove the ions from uh, you know from inside the uh, crystal so the density will going to decrease okay again uh, the Scott key defects is specific for a specific uh, types of crystals okay uh, that means the number of Scott key defects observed in a crystal is def definite for that uh, you know that crystals as for example uh, you know uh, if you take sodium chloride crystal, let's suppose one centimeter cube sodium chloride crystal, okay. So in that one centimeter cube sodium chloride crystal, there will be always approximately 10 to the power 6 Scott key defects are observed in room temperature, okay. So remember this point, room temperature, okay. So it actually varies with temperature also. Moreover, uh, you know, we can calculate the number or actually the ions required you know uh, to f produce uh, one Scott key defects and defects okay so if you want to calculate the ions required to produce one Scott key defects in case of sodium chloride then what we have to do we have to uh, you know divide the number of Scott key uh, Scott key defects are uh, present in uh, in one centimeter cube of uh, that crystal okay so present in one centimeter cube of uh, the sodium chloride crystal divided by the number of ions ions uh, present in that one centimeter cube of the sodium chloride crystals so we know that the number of uh, Scott key defects in one centimeter cube of crystal is equal to what? 10 to the power 6. Okay, so we already know this one. And we, al we also know that the number of ions in one centimeter cube of crystal is actually equal to 10 to the power 22. So we have div we divide 10 to the power 6 by 10 to the power 22. So we'll get 10 to 1 by 10 to the power 16. That means, uh, you know, to form uh, one Scott key defects we need 10 to the power 16 number of ions in uh, you know uh, that uh, sodium chloride crystals understand so in other words also we can say that uh, 10 to the power 6 number of ions can that means in sodium chloride okay can produce one Scott key defects understand so ions are required okay 10 plus 6 ions are required again one more information about the Scott key defect is that uh, the ionic solid uh, can only exhibit the Scott key defects if the difference between the sizes of the cations and anions are minimum okay that means they have a very small difference between the cations and anions that means the size difference okay but in case of Frankel defect, we already know that the difference between the sizes of the cations and anions should be significant. But in this case, the size difference should be minimum, okay. As for example, sodium chloride, the size of the sodium positive and the chloride negatives are almost similar. So they can exhibit Scott key defects. Some other examples are uh, potassium chloride, cesium chloride and silver bromide. Okay, so they can also exhibit Scott key defects. Interestingly, the silver bromide can exhibit Scott key defects as well as the Frankel defects. Okay, so these are all about 
stoichiometric defects so now we will going to discuss about the second defects which is known as impurity defects okay so what is impurity defects actually the impurity defects is observed because of the presence of some impurity in a uh, crystal okay so let us suppose we have some molten sodium chloride uh, in a beaker so if we add a little amount of strontium chloride and let them crystallize uh, for a long time then what will going to happen the actually some side of the sodium positive ions will going to be occupied by the strontium two positive ions okay since we know that the sodium in a sodium ions only one charge is there no? one positive charge is there but uh, uh, in that you know that impure that that impurity that means the strontium two positive ions there are total two positive charges are there no? so uh, the each strontium two positive will going to replace two sodium positive ions okay to make it electrically neutral okay that means you know if we introduce one strontium ions in a sodium chloride crystal then uh, it will going to create one vacant site because we know that uh, one strontium will going to replace two sodium positive ions and if two sodium two uh, positive ions will be replaced or removed then there will be two vacant site we're going to create understand but between these two vacant site only one vacant site will be occupied by the strontium ion okay so it will going to uh, you know create one vacant site that means if we introduce two strontium then two vacant site will be created if we introduce four strontium then four vacant site will be created that means the cationic vacancies which is uh, produced uh, uh, is equal to the number of the total uh, strontium ion which is introduced inside that crystal okay and some other example of this defects is the solid solution of cadmium chloride and silver chloride okay the last defect is non stoichiometric defects okay so this is actually opposite of the stoichiometric defects and uh, you know uh, we already know that in case of stoichiometric defects the formula of the compound is remain conserved but in this case actually uh, you know the stoichiometry will going to be disturbed by the defects so you can define the non stoichiometric defect like this if the defects will going to disturb the stoichiometry of the substance or you can say the crystalline solid then those type of defects are known as non stoichiometric defects okay the non stoichiometric defects again are classified into two types okay the first type is known as metal excess defects and the second type is known as metal deficiency defects so what is um, you know metal excess defects so we already know that metal excess defect is a non stoichiometric defects so that means the stoichiometry of the uh, you know the crystal will be disturbed first of all this is the condition okay so that means the stoichiometry of the crystal will be disturbed because of the excess amount of metal present in that crystal understand again metal excess defects are classified into two subclasses the first one is metal excess defects due to anionic vacancies okay so we can understand this by using one example so basically alkali halides uh, like sodium chloride potassium chloride they actually exhibit this type of defects okay so let us suppose we have uh, some sodium chloride crystal so if we uh, you know heat this sodium chloride crystals in atmosphere of sodium vapor so this is very important okay so if we are heating this sodium chloride crystal in presence of what in presence of sodium vapor okay then some sodium uh, from that sodium vapor will be going to deposit on that sodium chloride crystals okay so when the sodium will be going to deposit it on the surface of the sodium chloride crystal then what will be going to happen uh, some chloride ion will be going to diffuse from the uh, you know from inside of that crystal to that uh, surface of the crystal at which the sodium was deposited okay during this process you know uh, the sodium will be going to lose one electron to form sodium positive ion 
then only that sodium positive ion can form sodium chloride with that chloride ion which is diffused from inside of the crystal understand but the, what, what about the electron which is lost by the sodium and actually this electron will again going to diffuse into the uh, you know the solid crystal and it will going to occupy the anionic side okay and the anionic side you know the anionic side which is occupied by the unpaired electrons are actually known as f centers understand because there may be many centers because you see uh, if one sodium positive uh, sorry if one sodium is deposited on the surface then one electron will be actually generated from that sodium understand if two are deposited then two so there will be you know many sodium actually many sodium will be deposited on the surface of the uh, crystal because we heat up that sodium chloride crystal in the presence of that sodium vapor understand so that anionic sites which are occupied by the unpaired electrons are known as f centers okay actually the name f center is coming from one german word known as Farben center okay and the meaning of Farben center is actually color center okay actually this name uh, color center is coming because you know if the sodium chloride can exhibit this metal excess defect then they can impart yellow color okay so the color actually why the color is observed because you know because of the excitation of the uh, you know this f center electron when they absorb energy actually this yellow color is observed uh, in case of sodium chloride uh, because you know if the metal excess defects are there in that you know sodium chloride crystal um, then what will happen the f center electrons uh, can absorb the energy from the visible light okay which is falling on that crystal and uh, they will be going to excite to the excitation level and because of that absorption of uh, you know some portion of the light from the visible light uh, you know they will be going to exhibit the yellow color okay similarly uh, we have some more examples like you know lithium chloride crystals so if we you know use some lithium chloride crystal and if we heat that lithium chloride crystal in presence of some lithium vapor then we can get some metal excess defects in lithium chloride also okay crystals and they will exhibit actually pink color okay and one more example is actually the potassium chloride crystal okay so when we actually heat the potassium chloride crystal in presence of potassium vapor then they can actually exhibit this metal excess defects okay so they have some f center electrons so because of this presence of these electrons actually f center electrons the potassium crystals can also exhibit some color and that color is actually violet color okay so this is all about the metal excess defects due to the anionic vacancies okay now coming to the metal excess defects due to the presence of extra cation at interstitial sites we can understand this metal excess defects due to the presence of extra cation by using the example zinc oxide okay actually the color of the zinc oxide at room temperature is white okay but if you heat this zinc oxide then it will going to lose uh, you know uh, oxygen as uh, shown in this uh, reaction okay so here you see uh, zinc oxide when we heat this zinc oxide then the zinc oxide will become what one mole of zinc oxide will going to convert into one mole of zinc two positive ion plus half mole of oxygen plus two electrons okay among this product oxygen will going to come out from that crystal so only zinc to positive ion will be uh, there inside that crystal in excess amount okay so because of this excess amount of zinc to positive ion we will have some defects and that defect is known as metal excess defects okay so since uh, th there will be some extra zinc to positive ions so the formula of the crystal will become 
zinc 1 plus XO okay and the excess amount of zinc to positive ions are actually going to actually they will going to move to the interstitial side and they will occupy the interstitial side and the additional uh, you know the electrons the two electrons which is also uh, you know um, which is also obtained from these reactions is going to occupy the neighboring interstitial uh, sites which are near to the interstitial sites which is occupied by the zinc to positive ions okay now coming to the second non stoichiometric defects which is uh, actually the last one okay and uh, is known as what metal deficiency defects so what is metal deficiency defects so we already know that this is a subclass of non stoichiometric defects that means the stoichiometry of that complex can be disturbed because of the metal deficiency understood because of the defect which is originated because of the uh, metal deficiency okay so actually there are many solids okay in this in inorganic chemistry or inorganic compounds we can say that there are many solids which are actually very difficult uh, to prepare uh, in the stoichiometric composition what is the meaning of it that means let's suppose as for example iron oxide feo okay and the stoichiometry of uh, this complex or this uh, you know this solid should be what one is to one because one iron is present and one oxygen is present okay but it is very difficult to prepare the iron oxide in this proportion or in this stoichiometry okay mostly it is found uh, in the composition of fe 0.95 and one oxygen okay so that means the ratio will be 0.95 is to one although iron oxide with 0.95 is to one ratio is mostly observed however there will be some other iron oxides are also found in which a range are there okay that means uh, you know the iron may be found from 0.93 to 0.96 percentage okay moreover some iron positive ions that means cations are missing from that uh, you know crystals because you see if you look at that uh, formulas then the ratio of the iron and oxygen is not one is to one so that means some irons are missing okay so that means what that means the uh, the crystal is not electrically neutral but we know that ionic solids are always electrically neutral okay to get the electronically neutral crystals uh, you know some ferrous ions are ferrous means fe2 positive fe2 positives okay some ferrous ions are replaced by the required number of fe t positive ions fe t positives means ferric ions okay to neutralize the uh, whole crystals such that we can get a electronically neutral crystals okay so this is all about the metal deficiency defects and in this class we have able to know about uh, the point defects which is observed in a crystal you may use this uh, flow diagram to memorize the all the point defects which is observed in a solid crystals okay hope you understand uh, this all the point defects uh, and uh, in the next class we will study a new topic